That's an interesting question because if I lined up 10 clinicians and asked them what does advanced MS mean, um, they would probably define it very different ways and that's part of our challenge, right? So for me personally, I think um, it's a, a stage of MS in which um, symptoms, whether they're cognitive symptoms, emotional symptoms, or physical symptoms, are having such an impact on quality of life that people are no longer able to do the things that are important to them. They're no longer able to be independent, safe, and comfortable. Um, and so those individuals I'm describing could look very different one from another, but for variety of reasons, their disease is having a major impact on their ability to function independently. Anybody with MS can have advanced disease. Um, so I think we tend to think of it as people who've had the disease much longer and therefore have either um, transitioned to secondary progressive MS or were primary progressive from the beginning. Um, but again, because we're looking at the ways that cognitive, emotional, and physical symptoms can significantly impact somebody, their disease course is almost less relevant than um, what is their um, ability to function safely, independently, and comfortably. I think that the available disease modifying therapies are all partially effective, and they have definitely helped um, to slow progression somewhat for many people, not for everybody. Um, and they have um, helped people stay functional longer. But I think what we've lost because of having so many treatment options is some of the emphasis on symptom management and other aspects of MS care that when I started in the field of MS, that's all we had. We didn't have the DMTs, and so there was a lot of work done um, in the areas of uh, rehabilitation and active symptom management and keeping people as functional um, as possible. And now it takes so much time just to talk about the DMTs and make decisions around them that I think we've lost some of that art around symptom management. And when you start to talk about advanced disease, I think one of the things that happens to many people living with MS is that they start to feel that their doctors don't have anything more to offer them. They may not be candidates for a DMT, or they may not have gotten significant benefit from a DMT, so they may stop going to the doctor. Um, and they may not be seeing primary care physicians because their neurologists were basically serving as their neurologist primary care physicians. Um, and so that's how we risk them falling through the cracks, because at the time when they need most support, perhaps, and assistance um, to stay safe and healthy and independent and have a quality of life, we may be missing them. And so one of the reasons we wanted to do this symposium is to um, figure out whose role it is in this comprehensive care team to make sure that those folks stay front and center in our attention, um, that we're helping them in any way they need help um, and that they know how to advocate for themselves in the complex healthcare system that we have to make sure that they're not dealing with advanced MS on their own.